Hi, oh. everybody. We don't want to look at this at all. Go ahead and do the game. Yes. Making up for the fill time earlier. You guys get all Dota, no camera talent. You cut me off. That was 50 awesome. minutes of camera talent. That's enough for one day, I say. You want to watch some Dota. Ten Think about all those remaining. makeup ladies that were helping <laughs> us They did out work really sport. hard. And now we're just like Five, leaving. That's unbelievable. <laughs> they spent like 35 minutes on you. <laughs> yeah, they did. Just making you look nice and pretty, and I just cut you right off. That's the way it happens. That's all right. It's for the people. All That's right? true. That's what they want. They waited all day. <laughs> Well, uh, we have ourselves another wonderful game, all Team you fine Aster. folks out there. Mm -hmm. Team Aster facing off against Undyne. Undyne it is, again, a, uh, I think a little bit of an upset happened earlier. Undyne able to Undyne's take a game off of IG. Oh, yes. We can't uh, the end of that one. Yeah. Oh, Undyne helping me out with my predictions. I went for the Bane. I felt like he'd be pretty popular this tournament. The Nightmare Elemental... Uh, Comes back very popular, uh, mostly for them, honestly. I feel like every time I see them, uh, they're playing it. So Dubu appears to be a fan. We've got a lot of chat going on here, don't we? They're using Ten the AS Monaco remaining. Gambit one. Interesting, interesting. Oh, Alliance nice. one. Tomato's very bad. cultured. I he feel is. like he's you know, he gets all around globally, both for playing for teams as well as purchasing chat lines. I, you know, I did a a, a a long interview with him, and I felt like he would he'd grown up so much. Like, I remember his days on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> there were some dubious <laughs> things Just going on. <laughs> there were some times where I was like, all right, man, you got to stop. You got to take yourself on a little bit of a, a less of a crazy time. Um, but he's a lot. You know, he, he, he rode, uh, rose up on the spotlight as mm -hmm. a 16-year-old and, like, you know, came to TI back then. And, and, and now he's, he's, you know, trying to go for a round two, playing under the wing of the one and only Moon Meander. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Major winner, Moon Meander. That's right. You know, Major Mander. Ten major Mander. <laughs> moon <Turn> Major. <laughs> All right. Well, Major Moon Meander. He's he's off to to Mars. But uh, there's another squad here besides North American Undying. It is Team Aster and Team Aster. They have been in the news. You've probably heard. All kinds about them on the mainstream, and um, obviously, uh, they uh, unfortunately uh, are playing from a quarantined location. But fortunately, we're able to continue playing, and that's the main thing. Unfortunately, once again, they don't have White Rabbit. White I, album. White album. There you are. <laughs> you 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 mixed I, up a couple I of the older players. Got a little excited. There. Yeah. Ten seconds they don't have White Rabbit either. Um, no, no. <laughs> but uh, you know, they do have eighty six though. Five that's right. Seconds. He's going to be coming on in mm -hmm. and helping them out here. You know what's interesting? Uh, Lenham has just been around forever. And there was something... Uh, we, were, we were having a, a talent meeting. And <laughs> oh, yeah. th there was something that somebody said... It was well, Tsunami. I was think, it? wasn't it? I, I don't remember who it was. We're, I think we're it thinking was tsunami. of different things. No, no, no. Okay, maybe we are. What are you thinking of? I was thinking of the fact that people always talk about, like, the... Okay, this player has been at every single TI. Oh, and yes. it's basically yes. just Puppy, right? Uh -huh. And now... Because of that, people forget that Lenham's been at so many different TIs Undying's that at this point it's his ninth. Yeah, he, he only missed the one. Actors so he, he has the same, like, basically pedigree that Kuro did at that point as well. Like, mm -hmm. the, a player that not a ton of people talk about in that way. Um, and so much so, in fact, that at the start of today, uh, Lanham had, had more games played than all of Virtus Pro combined. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, it's just yeah. crazy. That is an insane stat. Like, obviously an extremely young team, but, Five I mean, he was a legend in, in Dota 1. He was well-known. People, all Dota players around the world would know about him, and he's still playing Dota 2 in the 10th International. It's crazy. Old as dirt. He is 31 years old, just a couple days younger <laughs> old than Old as me. dirt. <laughs> just a couple days younger than me, <laughs> which is great. Um, but he's, he's still getting it done out here, drafting for his uh, his collection of young and old guns as well. Yeah, uh, again, like, let's say you maybe you haven't watched Dota in a while. You probably remember Boboka. 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 However you want to go for Five it. Seconds. This is actually him as Borax. He's changed his name to Borax. So get used to Do that. Do you want to tell the people why? I, you know, I will tell the people why. It's an homage to Jerax, who he emulates and respects to the highest order as a two-time TI winner. And uh, upon his retirement, was like, nice, I'm stealing that. <laughs> I got it. And <laughs> turned his name uh, to Borax. Which is really awesome. Yep. I think that it's always good to show a little bit of that cross-regional love that occasionally remaining. happens, which is, you know, the way that Jarek mm -hmm. started out as well. You, he made the Five move away from Europe, remaining. headed on over to Southeast Asia, played there, uh, you True. know, yeah. dominated the region, and, well, 
who knows? Maybe we're going to have some uh, some other players playing in other regions in the next season. Who's to say? There's a chance. True. Dare to dream. Now, I have a question. XXS. You yes. know, back in the day, I always remember the Magnus. Yes, I was thinking of that, too. And Magnus is huge right now. But it's mostly like a one. I, I mean, Like the one, I, to me, at least feels the best right now. So that's a little unfortunate. But maybe we can see that mixed in here in some of these drafts. I don't know if they've been pulling that one out quite yet. You think the mag looks best in the, the one. That surprises me. I like the me. one. You don't like the one to carry mag? It's not that I don't like it. I just always think of it as like the two. I don't know. I Number think it looks two. really nice as safe lane. I'm down. That sounds fine. I don't have anything against that. Well, either way. Uh, it is indeed Undying's slot here. So let's talk about heroes that are in this game. Uh, frankly, it just looks very familiar to what we've been seeing throughout the day. So nothing too shocking here. Uh, the ABBA coming out at this point, very good versus the Tidehunter. Uh, if there's a Ravage, you can just pop your ulti and shield someone else. Boom, two heroes out of Ravage. If there's a Fiend's Grip, for some reason, you can just Aphotic Shield and it goes away. Sorry, Bane players. And that's sort of devastating. <laughs> it really is. That's a big cooldown. Just go, whoop, shield. Dunzo. It's a noise it makes. But the other thing that you can do, hypothetically, is Team just Astros rip somebody that's to not near the ABBA. <laughs> That's true. A, yeah. It is actually a pretty short save. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's and, good. And also, you know, just rotating into a lane, I feel like Bane can go and make something happen. Sometimes you'll catch a carry on a wares or mm -hmm. what have you. Um, it is a little bit scary against the Lycan. I, I feel like taking this remaining. Bane first, it's like kind of nullified what this hero wants to do with the exception of securing remaining. a lane, which it yeah. will be able to do well for Turn the Sterablade. That's true. Lycan is one of the worst heroes because you know, obviously he's a bunch of units and you have single target spells. Barring getting yourself the AoE Brain Sap, which probably isn't going to happen. Now, I'll say this. Some people were thinking that Undyne was going to go out in groups. I don't necessarily believe that. But this wow. is a really Astros important match for them. Ban. I think they need to take at least one game and probably two. I mean, the the one against IG kind of helps. It it's definitely salvages some stuff. But to me, at least, it feels like for Aster, if they want to make their way out of the groups, uh, they need to get a win here. Because, like, I don't, I don't even know remaining. if 1-1 one, one is good enough. I feel like Aster kind of need to make sure that they get a 2-0. Because, like, Undyne remaining. is one of the main ones they're competing for to, to sort of beat out in the group stage. And since Undyne got that win against IG, it just makes things sketchy. Right, you just want, yeah, you're trying to win, like, you know, there's certain matchups where you're, like, you're kind of counting those points before they hatch, as they say. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, these are the kind of teams that maybe you're, you're hoping to uh, to grab that one, so. I mean, the other people that you're sort of looking at in these groups are, like, the Thunder Predator. Um, I mean, maybe the way that Alliance is playing, Ten potentially. Uh, that could be another target or... or, or uh, T1 Five seconds like those remaining. are those are the ones that really stand out maybe a thunder predator like but it, it, it kind Team of gets Masters sloppy and weird like pick. there's a very clear top of group A uh, and down here at the bottom of it um, any of these games are like vital for uh, for both these teams. Well, it will be a uh, last pick mid here available for Undying. So something for Brile to, to figure out here. Uh, Brile Heroes I see Invoker is still in. Okay. That Five looks pretty nice in, in its current state. Hmm. Uh, you know, Alacrity looks pretty good. More team fight. It would be nice. Like I can definitely see where Invoker gets picked and the Quaswex happens and you don't get enough early game kills and the game's kind of sad, so maybe you want a Spirit Hero instead. I'd also be fine with a Spirit. Those feel kind of weird, though, right? Like, you have a bunch of big, tanky strength heroes here. Oh, what about Tim? Undying's turn to pick. Oh, that's a bit spicy. Well, uh, you know, for Aster's hero, I'd probably say Invoker would be perfect, just like Undying. Okay. So, you know, they're, they're going to grab it first. Interesting. Any good Invoker combos? They have uh, Avatar, Sunstrike. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, Ten seconds. They don't really remaining. have a great shoot in hero. Uh, I guess if you manage to get the Aghanims, like, sending in the tiny is kind of okay. Remaining. I feel like you don't play... I feel like you have to play Quaswex, though. Can you play Exhort in this? No, game? no, it would be Quaswex for sure. Okay. I just mean, like, you know, later, later on saying, when yeah, Tiny's yeah. got his thing, you know. We saw it earlier with our Tiny Evoker. Look, you got a couple helped out kills. Maybe Death Prophet or something. I don't know. I, I, I think you need. What about your buddy Kunkka again? Kunkka and Ty. Okay. Versus Evoker. Yeah. That sounds sick. Yeah. Good call. Let's bring it out. I just copied your homework the last time we had an Invoker. <laughs> Guess you, you said Kunkka. I said, oh, well, it's really good. Why are people not banning Kunkka when they pick Invoker? I, I, I don't know. It definitely looked great last time. It's so strong. Dude, you know what it is? I literally think that, like, that game at TI8 
or maybe had the like infamous kunka and he just said it so sick you know you know what i'm talking about <laughs> no it true sight remember no, i don't he just said kunka <laughs> yeah they they asked him like what do you want what do you want as your hero and then he just says kunka and he's playing against Thompson and invoker and he just absolutely yeah. wrecked him and won the whole game <laughs> There was just like this, this like sort of defining scene where he like says, "Yeah, that's that's the hero I'm gonna play." And ever since remaining. then, I just feel like every time I see an invoker get picked, somebody picks Kunkka. Five seconds well, remaining. Dominates. It's clearly a good plan here, and uh, everything's sorted out here for picks. I don't see any surprises. The offlane lichen returns. I've seen quite a bit of that. We saw some agonims. Uh, no shocks on the side of Undying as well. Everyone's in their respective roles, so we're just gonna kind of slowly drift into a match here. I think that both teams look pretty comfortable with what they have. I would say Undying's looks a little easier to execute and very cookie cutter compared to Aster. Aster, I feel like, has a lot of moving parts that are kind of complicated. But they are also pretty on brand for what's strong right now. I feel like we've seen a lot of tinies with success. Mm -hmm. A lot of snap fires that have success. The ones that maybe are a little bit more funky are like the ABBA Invoker. In a way. I mean, Voker less so. But ABBA, to me, is maybe the one that feels the most weird. It's like a lot on this tiny to get stuff done. And for Bobica, uh, also known Borax, to uh, mm -hmm. you know get those cookies landed with like wolves or something, right? Yeah, I don't know how to feel about the Snapfire. Because like, uh, the best Snapfires I've seen has been like Sox and Q, And I feel like they always have a combo that they use the cookie with. Right. And that's what makes it feel strong. They just have like really good cookies in general. Nothing even like crazy, but it's usually like, oh, cookie, this hero who then has a follow-up stun. And it's chained, and it's a bunch of damage. It lets you close the gap, get your damage in. This game, I see that there's a, a Phoenix. So we're going to little Shredder the Egg. That's cool. But I think outside of that, yeah. I'm not that convinced by the Snapfire pick. You know what? <laughs> I, I feel like I Prepare actually, when I see a Snapfire picked against a Phoenix, I actually feel worse about it. If that makes sense, because I feel like they're thinking yes. about the egg too much. They're not thinking as much about like the hero in itself. I would agree with that. Um, and now again, that's not always the case, but to me at least, I just I feel like I like the Snapfire games more when there's like you're picking it like with the Snapfire Mortimer Kisses combo or something else like that. Oh, what a bunch of great hippomaniac lines! Wow, this is this is the height right here. Is that like the European version of Wombo Combo? Yeah, I guess. Wombo Combo. It's so good. Wait, is it? I don't know what they're saying. Combo Bombo something Mambo Wombo? Combo uh, It bombo, sounds like it's bombo, some version bombo. of Combo. Of course, I, I don't know one. that, so. No. If it's in Dota, it can't be that bad. That's true. You know, that, that's not on me. <laughs> if I'm saying I get in trouble, you know, it's on Val. <laughs> the other thing that I was going to mention is, like, the, the cookie uh, stuns and stuff. It's a little, pretty easy to nightmare dodge those, right? So that that's something else to think about is like you you potentially got a pretty telegraph stun that could be salvaged. <laughs> mm, true, true, true. Oh yeah, how good are the nightmares on other heroes too? This game. Step lively now. Uh, not much. That, that's that's kind of the best one, huh? Yeah. Everything else is a little bit difficult. Maybe nightmares like Avatos thing or something like that. It gets Plus, a, a nightmare in general though versus Lycan can be a bit rough because you know the, he can just like send a unit. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, and removed from his own allies. Now. Your admiral is on board. Top uh, three taunt. F probably my favorite music. It's very maritime. You know, it makes me think of home. It's good. You know which one makes me uh, that I like a lot is the Marana one, <laughs> um, but only under certain circumstances. No, I already know what you're gonna say. If you like pull your your cursor in a circle yeah, I knew you were and do it slowly this way. Marana just jumps up and down and stands perfectly still. Um, you know, yeah, try it at home for everybody. Just go in a, in a very slow counterclockwise circle as you're taunting at Marana, and you'll see what I mean. Oh, now that we've got the important stuff out of the way here, the bounty runes are spawning. <laughs> Doesn't look like... Oh, we got one contest. Saberlight Lana. Oh, got oh. it. He's like, you <laughs> think you're going to outclick <laughs> me? <laughs> How long have doing this? <laughs> My hands are clawed. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even work anymore except on a mouse. Do you know what I had to give up to get that click speed? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, he gets the bounty room because of it. That's true. All those years were well worth it. All right, Kunkka versus Invoker. Uh, Kunkka, what, was like 10 CS, I feel like, at maybe six or seven minutes ahead. It was pretty bad, that last matchup. It, it was quite a thwomping, if I recall. It's a little bit interesting. He decided to go all the way back to dodge that hand. 
team. Like 100 mana at this level one, it's not usually there, but you can see Bryo really valuing that uh, even here at these early levels. I wasn't watching, was it because of the range creep? Did he get denied yeah. because of it? No, he just didn't get oh, okay. denied because of it. I was curious. Yeah. But uh, something to watch for indeed is how well he's able to play this Bryo, obviously. Uh, I'm sure plays against uh, Kunkas all the time as an invoker and those some of the important things they have to do with. Oh, nice, nice place. Now, uh, we talked to Fog a little bit earlier, who did get to cast some of the uh, the Aster games. And he said he felt like that 86 was actually the best player in one of those games. Mm. And that uh, he was doing a very good job as a stand-in. So, uh, clearly coming in in a very difficult situation. So, I'm impressed to, to hear that he's already doing pretty well. And uh, I'm hoping to see a little bit more of that here. Because obviously the expectations for him themselves are relatively low. Well, to be fair, if he's saying he's their best player, is that saying he's doing that really well? I, they are 0-2. <laughs> they are 0-2. That's the only thing to keep in mind. Yeah, okay. Right. No, no wins here. All right, I got you. That's fine. Just total beatdown commentary. You've got it, buddy. Hopeless here from oh, the radiant side. No, that's not what I'm saying. All right, how's the bottom doing? 8-4 and four, uh, versus the, uh, the Lycan Snapfire lane. Not really something you think of as uh, applying a whole lot of pressure right away. So we'll get off to an okay start. Should make it, I would guess, all right to that next meta, you know. But... Uh, that minus armor. Phoenix obviously a very low armor hero here. That does kind of stink. That's interesting. Decision to go on in there for the dive. Uh, it does obviously leave Moon a little bit vulnerable if things get spicy, but uh, keeping it cool for the moment. And yeah, so far, so good it looks like. Uh, Lycan and Hyde both a little bit behind their uh, their counterparts. And you can see that Monet coming back in here is just going to try and deal with it. But the wave is pretty far pushed up. <laughs> Easy to deal with. Ryo there is going to uh, try and farm this camp before heading on back into the lane. And this is why, you know, dodging those EMPs earlier. Make sure you get the farm speed going. Yeah, so this now. happens in the bottom lane where, like, you're board. blocking off their camp and, you know, you know you want them to get a pull in or anything, but now it's kind of stuck a little bit too close to the tower, and you don't really have the heroes to punish this. So, like, what's uh, what's Lana supposed to do right now? Should he go back and like pull the small camp? Let's say he's gonna get that space, but then do lose a bane, right? So there's pressure on him on A. It doesn't feel great. How much region is that? They only have one tangle left. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll get the pull off. At the very least. And still, Monet is missing out a little bit. Doesn't manage to get a couple of hits there, so stuff to watch for. There was also a Radiant Glyph, which I think might have ruined what they were going for with that pull. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> it's causing Monet to like try and micro this out of here, trying to like drag the wave a little bit. Does get the range creep, but I, I think Saber Lights. Relatively happy with this. It's going to get pushed out a little bit, but it, I'll tell you what, this is giving a ton of free time to do. He is just out. He's doing stacks. He's checking on runes. Uh, we'll even get a full loop de loop back around. Could even grab a wave if he wants to. Like but he's going to go for a really deep ward for uh, potential courier snipes. Oh, well, speaking of which, he might actually get this uh, courier on the way back now. Oh, runs into Lana, though. Back away. Now, do they send the courier back in a safe way? It does look like they're going to be able to. So that's exactly what you needed. But yeah, as you mentioned, uh, a couple of stacks built up there for the Kunkka later, most likely. And I thought we saw one maybe over in the jungle as well, but it doesn't look like it. Top lane, we haven't talked about it a whole heck of a lot after leaving, but right now, across all three, is uh, Dine in the lead. Very minimally, <laughs> by the looks of it, you know? And, uh, the lines come out. We're, uh... All right, who's dying first? going to be a five-minute post for blood. I, think, I don't know. It, it feels like it might be Moon. I was going to say Moon, too. I think it's Moon as well. Like, got the low armor. Yeah. I feel like they're, they're kind of, you know, you're getting level four on Snap soon. There's going to be a lot of damage. That cookie might come out. It can happen so quickly, too. Of course, he's the one now pressuring on the Vorax. Yeah, Moon really thrives when people doubt him, so... This is the most powerful thing we can do for Undying. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be careful. No one man should have all that power. As they say. But, uh, yeah, you can see at least now Borek's gonna back over 
and try and secure this rune. Obviously, super important for the Kunkas to be able to make rotations happen uh, when the six-minute mark comes back around here. Your and is at on the board. very least, it looks like H6 should be able to secure topside checking it. Uh, but likewise, Undyne make the move. Who gets luckier? And it's Undyne. Picking up a regen for Brian. Not bad. This game is just so static feeling right now. Everyone's really just is. hanging out in their lane. Dude, Doom was coming mid, but that's only because there's a hood on Tide. Safe legs Oh, we got an X mid. Okay. Nah, that is fine. Step lively now. There he is. Your is on board. I mean, again, it's like able to get a deny off the back of that, but. <laughs> I vote for denies. He's got I'm a pretty again. serious mid laner. Oh my god. Made it in the right click. That was pretty sick. Radiant Courier too. has been killed. <laughs> Do manage to take down the Courier here, as Dubu won't quite get into range to find the uh, the tinies at the very least. That word though, paying off already. Absolutely. That's what you need little snipes. You know, it's interesting. It it does feel like Step you know both now. teams Your very comfortable just sitting back and not really putting any significant pressure on. Rotations, change up the laning stage. All right, if we do, uh, you know, no rush, 20 minutes, who is the better lineup? I feel like this is what I was supposed to ask you. Okay, well, my answer would probably be <laughs> Undying. Okay. I, I mean, unless it, like, the floodgates just open at 20 and you have the perfect items on Aster, then I could see that being a bit of an issue. But I, I don't know. I feel like right now there's a better opportunity for Aster to put pressure on in the first 20 minutes than there is for Undying. So I, I think that Aster will probably be the first ones to start shifting the pace here relatively soon, the hero you'd want to do that off of the back of, uh, it has to be your invoker, right? But our invokers today, they, they have struggled to really get a whole lot going. Uh, I feel like the hero just doesn't have that same attitude towards creating space and kill opportunities that like the spirit heroes do. And, and to be honest, I feel like I haven't seen almost any hero be particularly good at like running around and making space. That, that hasn't really been the way that Dota has been Looking at least, it feels like it's been much more like trading towers, dodging away from fights, like sort of not going into engagements. Five man Dota. Yeah, that's definitely what it feels like. Now, whether or not that's going to remain the case or not, uh, time will tell. We'll see. That's Dyer's what people are doing. Is under attack. I think they got a read of the patch. <laughs> Or it's a nervous day one group stage. Yeah, that probably could also be that, right? Really you know, nothing feels worse good. than going for plays like a smoke or something, getting like three hero wipes, and then you just you don't even want to like keep playing that game. Or just like getting nothing. Like seeing these guys in the pubs. Again. That, yeah, that's true. I mean, if you try and make moves and they're not successful, you're just losing because the enemy yeah. team's not making moves. They're all farming, and now you've just like lost some of this like gold balance that you had. And well. As expected, it is the Invoker, rotates top, but uh, there's a great ward there. Spotted the whole thing, spotted his Courier. Tagging along behind him too, if there was any doubt. And they're gonna set up a defensive Bryle. Lurking oh. in wait here, gonna start cutting some trees. Dude, look at his build. Three, four, one, one on Bryle. He's got the uh, arm like coming out too. Back to the big damage. That is super interesting. I mean, his X range is nothing. This is not a, a hero that's going to be able to, like, get a ton of this stuff done. Do you think he might just be chilling? <laughs> just hanging yeah. out for a while? That's clear it's some green waves? It's like, all right, I'm going to farm. Yeah. Tomato, did you think these were your camp? Oh, I'm fine. That's cool. You're a terrible leader. I understand. Well, farming uh, most successful. They hold the top three networks spots at the moment. But uh, they're not far behind on the side of Aster, that's for sure. No one uh, falling at a pace here. My goodness, guys. Where, what is happening here? <laughs> it's 10 it's minutes, no what kills? Happening. Oh, man. I mean, again, it, it feels like this should be good for Undyne. And they're getting ready to trade off the towers as well. Aster not too perturbed, not too bothered. I'm perturbed. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. Oh, my guy stole those creeps. Played for a while. But up here top, Borax. Saber light there. They lay a trap. Ravage is ready. Cookie away. They back out. Wow. That was the most action we've had in a while. It's sad. 
They draw a line. They want to go deep into enemy territory. Uh, that was actually Dubu's line predicting the movement, and he was correct of what Borax is going to do. So well done, Dubu. Uh, and they want to now uh, defend this tower. So Brial comes back in. Defense. Success. Wow. Another <laughs> thrilling piece of action coming from this game. But this is uh, some cerebral Dota, you know? It Just is. Using their big brains instead of their big brawn. Thinking about what's worth, what's not, and right now the worth play is hanging out yeah. in the jungle. You know what always happens after these games? Is it's a complete and utter mess game, too. It's true. It's just going to be like five heroes under tower two minutes. <laughs> that, that's game two. It doesn't matter who wins this one. Well, we're going to see now if they can make this move. Uh, Brial just now getting that level 10 talent for the 30 damage, but still only the 1.x. Okay. Oh, what a, who needs X? Dude. All right, that's pretty sick. That is good. That's some good stuff right there. Perfect done. Uh, Dubu holding the uh, the grip as well, right? Not able to get the helm creep, though. A little bit unfortunate. Would have liked that bounty. Instead, they drop down wards to block the ancients. Tower. And Ryle's Tomato. Taken. Tomato. That the was the EMP. That way. He lost too much mana. He couldn't get off a of Sunder, even wow. if he wasn't stunned. Big play there. Yeah, that's a lot better. Uh, Aster, much happier with the one kill they have right now on the board. Trying to transition into some damage. Oh, that's a max range ravage. He tries to catch. There's the grip onto one, but the avalanche interrupted. But Bryo moves on in. Wants to get the big hits. They will find Monet there. But with the haste and the DD. They need this kill. They're going to chase it on down. Can they find enough Saber Light going to be able to take him? Now 86 looking for the walk back. Has to be careful as they don't have the cooldown yet. Again, long duration. On that X marks the spot at level one as Lenem going to get chased. The torrent goes out, anticipating the two not quite able to hit it. The slowdown comes out in time, and now Bryle eventually will be able to find him as they get the pullback, the punch, and eventually the kill. Yeah, Cookie not in there in time for the save, so Ryle is going to farm his way out of their jungle now. And uh, after losing their TV, a couple uh, kills going back Step in their direction now. here. So they continue to hold about a 2k lead. Now, mind you, they did give up the mid tower terrain when they went for that chase, so Monet and 86 get right back onto those stairs and they start hitting to the tower. Monet with the alacrity. Is, is this crazy? Saber Light does not appear to care all they that want much. This tower. That's a lot of damage onto this tower, and no Ravage. Looks like it's going to be enough. Saber Light getting brought down low. Maybe overestimate how strong it is. Oh, but the torn in a boat! And then the egg. Is it going to be enough, though? Dubu walking in the cookie. Oh, he could get gets him out. Ooh, he didn't have any mana, probably got Nightmare. Didn't have the range. I mean, Brain Tap reaches further, so he's hoping to just get the kill. But yeah. I, I can't believe the way XXS just like sauntered in there. He just like walked in without ulting, and he gets caught in that torrent, too. Might uh, not see that one again. Might be like, you know, that's definitely not worth it. And that's the only way he can catch me with my slow movement at the moment. Well, Undyne still a little bit struggling here. And, uh, I mean, again, it's not like they're they're necessarily having a bad game, but it just feels like it's, uh, you know, it was so much better. And Aster have definitely been able to pull it back and start to look a lot stronger. And now with Smoke Up play, this is Aster trying to build that momentum. Dying. Smoked up too. They're going to run into each other here, but no Ravage. They have the oh. grip though. Cookies? Cookies versus grip. Who's going to last longer? Play chicken. Oh, 86. Sends up killing him. Poor old Dubu. Tie not the hero you on that situation. Hit him. Hit him harder. Come on. What's wrong with it. you? I'm building an agonist. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I'm going to give a few glasses. heroes I'd rather have a bit more. Well, uh, land him. Now running his way down under the tower. Be okay. Oh, and instead it's Moon on the other side. It just gets brought down by Monet. Next success. Big kill there. Tries to back out. Nope. That's your one tower. Continue to take damage. Again, keeping in mind for this uh, Undying team, they they played the first series uh, for their group, which means played one at the the beginning, another one uh, just in the middle of the day, and now playing again in this last series. So a very long day of Dota, having to stay sharp and on top of it. Uh, and then of course Aster, uh, still looking good and playing under difficult circumstances themselves. They're playing the first and last series as well.
Bounty. A lot of Dota. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, obviously, we had some uh, technical difficulties in the start, too, so it's getting a little bit late for some of these players. But uh, we got two games of Dota, and we're just getting started on this one. They're going to smoke up, and they want to finally break this game open. It's still relatively even between both teams, each side looking for what's going to give them that big advantage. And uh, we talked about like the no rush and, and how that could benefit one team more than the other. This is the kind of timing that you really need for Aster, right? Because they're not quite there on some of these heroes in the dire. The BKB for Kunk is the next huge step for a team on dying. You don't want to fight before that, uh, unless it's an advantageous position. So I think Aster should be trying to force something here near that Kunk. Uh, going be there with the rest of the team. Yeah, very interesting, right, that uh, Tomato's there, too, anticipating this, you know? Like, yeah. They're prepared to bring that uh, that big hero with them and make sure that they're not going to lose it on some fight just because their carry's busy farming somewhere. Comes back to that concept you were discussing of just, like, how much we're playing together at the moment right now in these games. So much emphasis on making sure that you're not Step losing the fights now. where everything Your starts to board. really determine the outcome of the matches. And you can see that Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Anna Dyne giving Dyer's Astra a lot of space. And Astra's fortified. willingly taking this up against strong veterans on the Astra lineup. Uh, a ton of experience in international play and doing all the right things right now. May, Shadow Blade walking out of there. I tell you. Lanham is just, I learned to be greedy as support because of him, but this is, he's got a Falcon Blade. He's a maniac. Torrent going to connect there onto two somehow. And Mortimer's Kiss is going out. Tomato, got to be careful. X marks the spot. Torrent, lift up afterwards. Still fun. Still not caring. And Metamorphosis, a little bit left in halfway duration, so I'm dying. After forcing a whole heck of a lot, as well as the glyph, are going to retreat back and farm up their own jungle. <laughs> Never stops. Yeah, just, just constant chilling. Meanwhile, uh, all I've seen is XSS just like chilling in their ancients this whole time and farming yes. in their triangle. Right? They have this ward up on the high ground, so he feels pretty confident he's in an okay spot. Uh, farming Ancients to help get some of the neutral items too is always going to be good. And well, how about uh, Farming Ancients and taking an Ancient? Wait a minute though. So I'm just going to walk away. Okay. Gets out of there. Yeah, there's no blink right on my A, so uh, Moon can play pretty safe in these fights. Saber Light backs away after a little bit of a kerfuffle there. And calls it off. So yeah, again, only eight kills in this 18 minutes. A very slow and steady matchup. Where towers have been traded. Right now, it is Aster with the one tower lead. Uh, as mid has been taken already, you need a little bit of extra time on a dime before they go for it. And Aster, the Roche pit. Everything according to plan. I mean, before the nerfs on Helm of the Overlords, you used to just win the game at this point. You just walked around with this creep and it didn't die. Will they find this here? Uh, that's oh. the question, but they're following that oh. same plan. Oh, Lanham going to get caught here. The Torrent going to connect now onto three. Trying to walk in. Open the MP. He has a big stick, though. Pops it afterwards. The Ravage oh, comes out, connects on all of them. Walking in, wants to get it. The egg down as well. Will it be enough? Brian Roche still down low. The Radiant it's still there. Up taking it. Aegis on the ground. Snatched by Saberlight. Two already dead, and now the pullback on to 86 for a round two. Can the 86 him? It looks like it's going to be close as the TP out. Dust? Going to no, get yeah, it, no, but no. nothing. No, no X for five seconds there. Oh, finally, this game building this steam and pressure for so long. It gets released a little bit in a burst of a Roche fight. And XXS uh, trying to be the last survivor here, keeping his creeps a little bit too close for comfort. And. Standing still for so long, it terrifies me. XXS. They are retreating out, and nearby. But uh, yeah, nice fight for, for Undying. They grab the Aegis, they get it on top of uh, Saberland. And mind you, of course, that means Aster, since it wasn't snatched, to get the Roche kill. Oh, so yeah. there was some uh, going Step their line, way there as Your well. And uh, it kind of feels like things are just going to stay a bit even. Here's the replay showing up here right now. And uh, there was that beautiful story you mentioned, too. What, what a great egg, too. Just the timing of, like, how it's getting close to the stun right near the end of Roche. They just need, like, a little bit more damage, making it even more frightening. But this age is on the ground for so long. It's just chilling there before they finally are able to grab their own saber light. Bryo maybe could have gotten that. <laughs> That's like all right. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't care. I got it. D-Ward? D-Ward? Oh, they got it. Damn it. 
will die. But, you know, this is the price you pay to eat. Yeah, it was a, uh, it's, it's, it feels now like, again, the dying kind of hasn't necessarily broken it open, but at the very least has, like, really seriously her caster by taking that Aegis away. This game looks a lot better for them, I think, if they're able to play it out with themselves. Oh, very interesting here. Saberlight going for the change-up on that build after getting that Aegis. Heavy Ogre Axe oh. for the Aghanims, like everyone's been doing, right? Has the Soul Ring. Considering getting a Blink. He's got it. All right, he commits. That is always a tough call on Ty, but I always respect the Ty players that recognize when they need it, especially when they're halfway through that Ags or something else to say, you know what? My team doesn't have the jump. Because some games you can get away with it, and it feels completely Dude. fine and natural to not have it. This Blink's so sick. good. This is really sick, too, because it's like... He shows the Ogre Axe. Oh, yeah, they're never going to see this coming. Yeah, th this is, like, completely they're not prepped for it. Oh, please don't show on the lane immediately. That would be so depressing. No, he's not going to. Okay, yes, he does. It's not exactly frightening, though, the way he's playing. Yeah, he immediately showed up. No, 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 this is the next level bait. He's showing the blink just, like, there, you know? So they kind of want to, like, break his yeah, uh, his Aegis. Like, oh, I'm by myself because I have Blink, which makes me safe. Meanwhile, his whole team smoked around him. Okay. They're right. baiting the Blink opener Aegis. I see. Very Maybe common Tidehunter tactical tradition. It's a, it's a good move. Scan. Radiant, very well aware they're up on that high ground. And, of course, Excess trying to farm towards that Aghanim Scepter. This is going to be a big timing for Aster. Get this one done, suddenly give the wolf bite over, but did they take the fight beforehand? Gotta be careful now. Now find some friends. Gonna get connected. Land up down low, but a lot of shield comes out. Saber Light still has that Ravage available. Not gonna decide to go for this one as we see the movement over to this side of the map by the Lycan. Tomato will be able to force back XSX for the moment. Alright, now Aster. Sure, they lost the one big fight, but now they have the wolf fight. The wolfy fight. Mm. Uh, no, it is just wolf fight, actually. It's not called wolfy fight, I checked. Yeah, okay, yeah, it turns out. Well, thank you for checking. Yeah. Uh, so that means our uh, our tiny rock man might become a uh, wolf man. It's scary. If he ever comes back near XSS again. It does feel like he's kind of just doing his own thing over there, doesn't it? Mr. Monet. Hey, that, that's fine. That's what a tiny player does. Okay. You know? Nuke waves, blow it up, has the silver edge so it can play a little bit more uh, aggressive and sort of out there on the map. Does it invis away. Could think about smoking up with the team, I would guess, here, like TP mid smoke. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Currently, is just uh, running back, and they're just going to meet him halfway by the looks of it. Okay. Well, they catch anybody, though. Doesn't look like it. It's already out of there. Oh, wait a minute, though. Speaking of catching people. And I'm in some trouble. And they're going to pop the ulti, catch with the X. Come on back here in a moment, why don't you? Get the kill. Ooh, that monster. Oh my god, they want to fight this. They're moving in. Got to be careful. The haste Kunkka is very scary. Saber light walking in. Snail run out of the Aegis. And they actually canceled the TP by Brile. So, calling it good for now. A thousand XP. That kill. Wow, it's good. Is there a gap or something? Um, no. Radiant's middle XP tower in is favor under of uh, Undying. Um, oh, I see. It's only like a hundred XP gap. Never mind. I see. Like two hundred XP gap. Gotcha. New graph, guys. You know, we're learning here. Jumps in. Wood ravage. Connects on to three. Will they be able to blow up the tiny right at the start? Monet down low HP. Oh, cookie for staff. Cookie afterwards. And it looks like just barely oh, able to wow. get out. That was everything dropped. Okay, these four staff. That, that's actually it's so huge. smart that he went four staff first in combination with the cookie. That is so good versus that combo. Because it's an AoE combo, right? It's Ravage and Egg. And it's just like, it's counting on the fact that you're stuck and you can't yes. do anything. Radiant's Clearly, that's not going to be the situation uh, if they can pull it off like that. And now they get the regress opportunity. They can like, smoke in after this wave if they want and try and go for a kill. The thing is, this tower at 30 HP, very annoying. 
but eventually it does go down to Mato. Only gets the final touch that opens up. There's outposts here as Aster running towards the mid lane. Kunkka just now finishing the AC. They want to fight. Roll that egg is down. Still 70 seconds left, but Undyne not going to give him the opportunity. And Roche likely not going to spawn by the time the next round of abilities are going to be all back up again. So it feels like they kind of got away with that one. Yeah, they did get some good vision now, but instantly be rewarded. All right, that is not going to last. Well done, Saberlight and team. The slow game continues. It's at 26 minutes satanic now. Uh, to go with everything else that Tomato has. Uh, 3,000 gold ahead of his arrival there on the Tiny. And then in between them is still this Conqueror who has opened up a 5,000 gold lead over his own mid lane opponent. He's had a hell of a game right now. Yep. And he went full farming like you pointed out at the start and it's really just all he's been up to. No. Farming and pressing BKB and that is a serious problem for Aster. Now Aster are starting to grew up, group up around this Helm of the Dominator, Helm of the Lord. And of course, the tiny paired together with the alacrity. So they'll take a tier two tower of their own. Let's go do about the gem, the 26 minute gem. When you're winning, this is uh, the confidence strat, all right? Now just don't lose it. That part's not good. But this is going to help them uh, chasing down the tiny for sure. Interesting. Well, again, the move in and let him going to get found. So it's 86, though. Get him there, BKB. Oh, there's the X play. Four staff won't save you from this one as they pull him back in, trying to salvage this good aphotic shield, but will it be enough? Sorry, you were saying. Chase the run. <laughs> I mean, this is still. Oh, the Ravage comes out on a four. Do they have enough for Monet? Pops that BKB, wants to run away from them. Gonna double wolf fight for this. Dude, they're out. They're good. They're coming back in. Bryo, round two. Have the second round. Avalanche toss. Good nightmare, though. And there's oh, the thunder, thunder from Tomato to salvage it! And then the torrent follow-up! Tomato makes the play, and Bryle pays off beautifully. They salvage yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, you tip that, that man. Tip. Oh, wow. The nightmare save from Dubu into the Sunder, all for my mid. That was great. No one expects the Medic TB. Oh, Bryle, look, look what he's saying. I will repay my team. Who expects the Kunkka here? What are you doing here? Yeah, to him, 86. Monet's got to back out, but there's going to be the combo as they take down 86. Absolutely perfect. Uh, I mean, what, what more can you do, honestly? What more could you want? You could want a Roche respawning right now. And Undyne, do, do they feel like they can go in and take it? I mean, there's no more meta. Ah, oh, it's tough, but yeah. Dude, he's got it on fight. the brain. He's taking a look. It's like, yup, it's there. It's a little scary. Yo, that Ravage, though. Yeah. That was nice. That was a good one. Question is though, I don't think we'll have time to watch it unfortunately, because uh, this could be a potential Roche contest. Again, as Aster, it's it's so hard to go on into this area and try and contest, but you really can't afford to give up a Roche at this point. I, I think they have to go. Yeah. Like I would just try and like steal it. Maybe like force a bad fight without Ravage or something. Because once the Ravage is back up, is there any chance you get this? Like, is there a BKB coming out soon for the Invoker? No. It's it's like all on Tiny at that point. That's a tough fight. Well, and, and this is the play. If Boker ended up going for, uh, like, you know, the components of the action except at first, but yeah. Try and take this down. Oh, no. Ravage, still 30 seconds away. Tomato opens up with the reflection. Got to be careful here. Torrent, the boat, it's pretty big. It's going to connect. Lanham pops that ulti, tries to run in afterwards. Monet finding an opening now. They buy back on the Bane. Roche down to about, well, a third HP or so. And still well, BKB on Tiny. Borax going to get him caught now. What else they have left in the tank? Ryle, BKB down. Dubu, maybe stepped a bit too far forward. Oh, oh gets punished, nightmare. but the Nightmare save at the last second. Nice Another kill. good torrent. Monet, Abba toss away. Thinking about going back in for a round two now. Reflection out afterwards. Turns on a Borax, able to find him, able to chase him down, able to kill. 86, nowhere left to go. They're going to throw out the beam. Saberlight moving in. Ravage is back up soon. He has it up and available. And their eyes are set on Amone. They want that kill. But instead, they take the veteran play. They move uh, back in and they go for Roach. Yeah, but they're here. This is dangerous. Tomato, 
He only has a little bit of meta left. Saberlate has the big jump in, but they want to get down Roche. They want to get it down Cookie on the wall. Is it going to be enough in time? They jump in the Ravage, connects on the four. Roche is so low. Lanham's getting beaten into, but he's got his ulti working. The turn now, Monet is down so freaking low, gets pulled back in with the X and gonna get killed. Oh, back to the Roche. tries to go in, but Roche is not low enough. He's in this in there, but there's nowhere to go. There's no end in sight. Undying, take that kill. Oh, Blink Borax. Dude, oh, no, they're gets baiting hacked. him so bad. Oh no, he wanted to go in and finish him off. But Roche wasn't low enough. And just like that, the Maestros finish the fight undying. Pretty as can be. Yeah, you don't have the sand is definitely the one there. They, they just didn't have it, you know? They, uh, they, I think they made the right play. Because I do think that that fight, there's no way they win it without Ravage. And, uh, we're sorry, there's no way they win it once the Ravage is back. And then this just kind of showed, right? right? We come back because of this huge Ravage from Saberly that now has returned. He was waiting for this moment for so long. When you survive that initial fight without your Ravage and they try and go again, you, it's like they just forgot, right? That Ravage just pops up, absolutely decimates them. Again, start to think about the way that this could go, this replay coming in. It, it, it felt like they just had him so close to being able to do it, and you know, maybe a little bit of miscommunication happening amongst Aster. Whatever the case ended up being, Undyne take full advantage, able to finish off Borax there in the pit, and secure their prize. And now, you know, where we're sitting, uh, as we get ready to hop back into this game, it is Undyne that have taken over this side of the map. All of the Tier 2 towers gone. Now going to try and close out the rest of it. And they just completed like so many items too. And there's an AAC on the Kunkka. They now have the Aghanim Scepter down on the Tide. I believe a Butterfly was also just finished on the Terror Blade. So that, that Roche fight was just so much more than an Aegis. They, they just went past so many breakpoints on their heroes where now they are so much stronger than the last time they fought Aster. It's not even close. This is going to be an incredible feat from Aster if they can pull back one of these fights. I do like one of the ways that they're thinking about doing it. Uh, again, giving some farm to Lanham on this hero that you might not normally expect. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get towards Naganim Scepter on the ABBA. It's very good versus Giant Wombo combo. Yeah. yeah, And that's definitely what Undying are up to. We'll see if he can get there in time. But right now it feels like Undying want to try and uh, really close this game out if possible. We'll have to see. Oh, looking for another win on the day. Uh, obviously, we just had a game uh, in particular with VG versus SG where, oh, yeah. frankly, it was looking pretty similar to this. Um, the Aegises were going the way of VG. They were in pretty good control. Uh, they had a terrible aid. Yeah. They felt a lot like this. And then the mistake they made is they went high ground without an Aegis. Uh, wait, when Roche was about to respawn, and yeah, they were kind of just messing around, tried to go for a pick off in the base, they got burnt, and uh, they lost a giant lead, and were actually in the deficit for a while before another eventual comeback. So, uh, Undying probably want to avoid that second half of the game and just go for the win the first time. I would imagine so, at least. God, Ryle, taking a lot of damage it's okay. there. Big tanky hero plus Sunray equals HP. So much HP. Oh, they got him pulled back in, dead! Oh, they caught him with the tidal wave. Nicely played. Saberlight appreciating what his mid player was doing there. Yeah, gotta be careful of stepping too far up there. Bryle will catch it. Armand A looking to catch him as well from the invis. He's invis and it goes into the wolf point. This is how he got Dubu last time. Danger. Danger. They have this. Sentry ward down, so and a gem on where. Saber Light too. Toss. Continuing to summon these illusions. 86 down low. Nightmare Bryle just backs out. Didn't even have to use the bow. Oh, but the great reaction. Good BKB, but they got the Fiend's Grip afterwards. Oh, nice. Got him under control. Good play by Borex, though, to try and take down one. The Demon Zeal comes out from Tomato to blow up that Snapfire. So the trade so far. Good amount of abilities in exchange for that Snapfire's life. But this is the beauty of the Kunkka, obviously. You can just keep this snowball and pressure on the towers going. Lainey is next in the TP. Easy as can be. The jump in. No Ravage. Who needs it? They pull him back out. Monet in some trouble. Down to low oh, HP. But it's not going to matter. As they will go for the egg, but it won't be enough. 
Aster losing heroes left, right, and center, starting to lose racks as well. Team Undying have come in with a perfect plan and have executed this one. Yeah, still 30 seconds left on the Aegis. They can rotate mid if they like. They can even pressure some heroes, I'm sure, if they dare step much closer. There is uh, always going to be the blink just gush straight up from Saberlight if they're feeling a little adventurous, but BKB even still remaining right now. Uh, for Bryle, so he got another play with that tidal wave too, pulling someone so behind. And the torrent, oh, good tornado though. Able to interrupt for the moment, save her like some trouble. Lumiander also, no more oh. egg. He's trouble. He's dead. Have they overextended? Aegis just, just now has expired too. And with that, a dying will retreat. But in the meantime, they managed to take the rain or the melee racks rather. So a lot of value over the last couple of minutes for dying. Aster still just stuck, scratching their heads, trying to figure out where to go. Yeah, a little bit more time to head home and spend some gold, well earned, from uh, a trip to the old Radiant Factory. What do they make at the Radiant Factory? Uh, heroes for you to kill. Okay. Every time you kill them, they just come back out. Gotcha. I guess that's what they produce. They do a good job. Well, they probably need to make some better heroes, because obviously fair. they're not getting the job done. Hello, how you doing, Lanham? Torrent, tidal wave. It's yeah, so confusing over between here. these spells here, man. Oh, he misses. Able to hit the stun after, though. Slow down. Four staff, looking cool. Oh my god. Dude, the Demon Seal Illusion does so much. <laughs> that poor uh, ABBA. Game is looking rather tough for Aster now. Probably even has a haze for Just in case this fight wasn't hard enough. 86. He doesn't have the BKB still. Jump in, just ravages him. Why not? The torrent, rather the tidal wave, pulls him back in. Another round of that one here. The double wolf bite. And look at this undying. Just going to try and cut this out. Say, come and deal with us. Toss up. Torrent instead. Tidal wave onto both. Get the heck out of here. The reflections, the illusions, constant spam of abilities. Just all to the tune of making Aster's life hell. Well, some attempted uh, in and out and pokes and prods here, but uh, not able to capitalize on the fact that he had to buy back on 86. So, pretty big loss there for Aster, not only gold wise, but also uh, just the, the threat of this invoker. He gets jumped on first. They'll be very happy to just ravage. The second they see the invoker now, they grab that kill. Your Admiral is on board. And uh, clearly, 86 never going to get to a BKB this game unless we go really late. And clearly, we're just going to continue to see the taunts coming out from Brow. Feeling mm -hmm. pretty good after the state of the game that we can see here. Almost yeah. 25. They're playing very reserved. They're not going high ground. They're waiting for the Aegis. They don't want to make mistakes. Saberlight's going home to hit some waves. They have the X to keep themselves as five after making a mistake. Oh, is this the moment? Tries to do it, but the Nightmare is there. They turn now. The Saber Light move in. Is the egg going to pop? They manage to blow it up. They have a round two of this one, though. Already the Invoker is dead. They take down the Tiny. Dead for 100 seconds. GG is called. And with that, Team Undying going to take game number one. You know, I, I think that uh, obviously Aster not playing under the best of circumstances, but Undying coming in and... Making a couple of surprises happen. First, they take down a game off IG. Now they come in, look pretty freaking good against Aster. Gotta start looking out. Uh, NA team number three is uh, coming for blood. Yeah, undoubtedly the strangest game um, that I have cast or seen today. I heard there was another <laughs> really slow game, but this one was very slow. It was weird. Uh, we weren't going totally anywhere. Weird. Everyone was just kind of hanging out in lane, content to farm it up a little bit. Uh, and farm they did. Yeah. Unfortunately for Aster, Undying, uh, they farmed a little bit better. And they also fought better. Um, they kind of just did everything a little bit better. And slowly that ramp up became a uh, ramp to the stars of victory. Something. But won't they find? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's like an atmosphere or something. Uh, but they, uh, they'll have to try it again in game two. See if they can do it once more. Do you believe in Aster to turn this around, Lyrical? I do, but I also believe that Undying won't let them. So That's a no. <laughs> All right. So we'll be back for game number two. Stick around.
Welcome back again, all you fine Dota fans out there in the wide, wonderful world of Dota 2. Trent. Hi. It's happening again. I'm sorry. I hit you kind of okay. hard right yeah. there. My yeah. No, I know we um, we rushed you really fast on That's that right. last transition, and I apologize because <laughs> that you. game was very slow. <laughs> it's, so it's I really feel true. like by rushing <laughs> this part of it, somehow I extended the game it's, much further than it needed to be. It was the monkey's paw. You're like, we're going to yes. get back into the game really quickly. But it's going to be a long one. <laughs> it, it was indeed. And it didn't really need to be. But that's okay. It's T.I. Yep. Take your time. You know, cross the T's, dot the I's, and um, win T.I. Oh, my God. All you have to do is win to win T.I. is cross your T's and dot Let's your I's. Let's get into the game now. That's true. That, There's you're, something there's so there. But it's it. live on camera, and I, di I didn't get there. And, you know, they're capital <laughs> letters when you, you we'll spell out T.I., but... All right, together we'll find something. I, I believe in us. Yep. Because we, we, we got what it takes. Do you believe in Aster yet? You had a little break to think about it. Undying's turn All right, to that's pick. a no. Once I, again, I, I want my goodness. To. I really want to. Team Aster's it's just like, turn I think to it's, pick. It's, it's got to be demoralizing, you know? There, there's definitely, it's a tough one for them. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that I really believe in Undying. Like, this team, to me, feels like one of the more motivated squads that you got out here. And I've talked to, I've talked it to death already, what I think about this team. Ten and seconds why I think remaining. that they've been performing so well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Five you just, you just sort remaining. of, it's apples and oranges, the way that you compare the two of them. So, that, that's where I feel like it's at. But the weird thing that I would say about Aster is that they kind of have that X factor. Team and that Aster's X factor, XXS. I don't <laughs> That's the X well factor. Got to get him on the mag, though. That's what I want to see. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know if we're going to get that one. Feels like it's not really his style lately. True. Uh, and probably going to be uh, on the old tide by the looks of it here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Shaker, TI time comes around. Here comes Earthshaker. The, uh, you know, the ever-present uh, truth of Dota 2. I would have liked to see maybe, like, the Ten Tide Rubik. Remaining. I feel like that would have been a cool opening. Oh, yeah, me too. But I think Snap is still good. Five um, seconds it's a Bobica hero. That's, that's sort of what I feel like they're feeling on right now. Not that Rubik isn't, mm -hmm. but yeah, true. I think that this is. Uh, it's got a lot of potential to look good. You've got like the double minus armor stuff in the laning stage gives you Roche taking potential. So that's like I guess the benefit of taking the the snap over the Rubik. All right, what's our anti tide hunter hero though? That that'll be a bit of a question here for Undying. I don't think you want to go like just disruptor um, at this point. Undying Seems a little bit unnecessary. And uh, well, they're not going to think about that. They're going to think about the fact that uh, they bad. don't have tenth pick. So okay. they're just going to grab this Lena. This could be a support Lena still. Uh, could could be a four Lena. Could theoretically be a five Lena. Definitely not out of the wheelhouse of Dubu. The guy plays five faceless void. I'm sure he'll be okay. Uh, but more than likely, this is just a solid, safe mid that you don't really have to worry about Ten if at the end of the draft remaining. you still say, Undying's yeah, we want Lena mid. Turn to ban. Oh. Now, if you want to disrupt, you did have to pick it there, unfortunately, since it is uh, one of the most consistently good heroes versus Tidehunter, but I'm still okay with the fact that Undying didn't just like opt right into it. You know the other thing that Lena gives you is like LSA Silver Edge hit. True. Yep. That Ten could be seconds cool. remaining. And then you've got an answer for Tidehunter. But it's not like super reliable. Five seconds remaining. It's like pretty good, but a little bit scary. And if you mess it up, then oh man, Lena's squishy. Yeah, and you just lose. We I feel like Lena's been kind of struggling at this tournament. Uh yeah, we had one rough game. Uh, where it felt like it was it was just tough because it was like bots and uh, BKB, which I mean that's been the build. It's been bots, BKB, into like chrysalis and like damage and stuff. Everyone's been opting for, but uh, some games that can look a, a little bit tough when you don't really you know find the kills or uh, you're not accelerating like crazy across the map. It in I think that the bigger issue that we saw in that game, which was again the OG Alliance one, was that it felt like that Lena had to be making those plays, whereas. Yes. You know, if you've got an Earthshaker already there that's out front and center, they've, they've already got some playmakers that are potentially there. What, so. Didn't she have an <laughs> turn wasn't, wasn't to it a three shaker <laughs> for S4 that very game? Was it, though? I think it was. <laughs> I mean, it was a shaker, but it was also, <laughs> there are there some, like, moments that happened. Well, either way, uh, they're going to ban out the Faceless Void themselves. Another hero that has at least some tools versus the Tide Hunter. So remaining. not going to be available to Undying. But they were much more concerned about the possibilities of the combinations Five of seconds essentially remaining. double bubble, big giant AoE strategy. And that would have been Ravage plus Chronosphere plus mm -hmm. the Mortimer Kisses. 
that's a lot of damage in concentric circles. So get away from those vicious Venn diagrams. You know what's weird? I was just trying to look up on uh, on Dota Buff all of the different heroes that have been played and what the win rate is and stuff. Mm-hmm. Ten uh, seconds It says that remaining. we haven't played any games of Dota. Has this all been a dream? Are you, uh, are you looking at damage? main event Five and not group stage? Remaining. Oh, Trent, you're so smart. Why are you so smart yeah, right now? I know. Well, I'm not going to try and do that magic curry anymore. They ban out the Doom as well. I see a theme. I know this one. Yeah. It's good versus tied. Yes. Oh, man. Team oh. Astros I could be an analyst, I bet. Ban. I bet you could. If you work really hard and keep Someday. your nose down. <laughs> who knows? Anything can happen. Team oh, Astos turn to pick. Undying's turn to pick. I don't know what I would actually Black be way. super down Let's for. go. Whoa. Dude, this is the combo. The snapfire clock. Okay, all redeemed. Team Astros win in this. I am right, mega go. down. Is it just because you have cogs and kisses? Cogs kisses. I, I've seen so many of these games. Um, it tended to be a snapfire position. Ten two seconds mm-hmm. remaining. Into a rotation for clockwork, and you just like walk in. Five cogs seconds and, and remaining. Kisses and it's over. All right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I absolutely love Clockwork Five. I think it's the funnest hero to play right now. Okay. It's what I've been playing a little bit. Very enjoyable. And what, what's so nice is that it feels like there's a lot of five heroes that, that are pretty viable right now. Now, mind you, in a pro game, some of them seem a little bit better than others. So I'm, I'm slightly surprised to see the Clockwork. But then you just go like, oh, it's Earthshaker. And, you know, Earthshaker absolutely hates Clockwork. It's the worst. You can't do anything, right? Mm. You just If, if he hook shots you, you don't get to play Dota. Um, that's always been the case for Earthshaker. It's always been the arch nemesis of this hero. And uh, that's something that uh, that long-time experience can give to you. And time and time again, this has proven to be true, where just because, like, the heroes have been changed a lot, if that core identity stays the same, all the buffs and the nerfs, a lot of that matchup is still, like, it's still there, right? And Lonham's going to spot something like that. It's quintessentially unfun. And <laughs> yeah. Occasionally... And every Dota player knows the most unfun matchups yes. in Dota. It's, like, almost quintessentially, like, unplayable. Five it's, it's, seconds that's just how it is. Now, the other flip side of that, though, is, you know, Moon Meander, he's been around the block a few times as well. He's sort of uh, crinkling around in his old age. His bones probably start is that, is that his brain that's crinkling? Exactly. Can he's got more wrinkles? so many folds. Yeah, that's good. Um, but the thing with that is that he says, hey, I got a bunch of strength heroes. You know what's good against that? Undying. Timber Saint. Oh, that's a good one, no, too. I, yeah, I, I knew you were... Sorry. You just wanted to mess with I, I did. Yeah, that's it. There was nothing. Uh, that's good. <laughs> I appreciate uh, it. We did skip over the Pango, <laughs> though, which I, I think is kind of interesting because I've seen some Pango games where I feel like, oh, wow, they must be really upset there's a clock Jeez. in this game because they just keep bouncing off of the cogs, and it feels like they just get annoyed by the clock the whole time. Uh, but then sometimes it gets really weird where the Pango is just, like, killing the allies of the, clo- the clockwork yeah. using the cogs, right? right. Getting Undying more and more bounces. So I think the better Pango player you are – this becomes a good matchup. If okay. you're a bad Pango player, you probably don't like Clockwork, but a good one will abuse the Cogs in the best way, anticipate where they're going to be placed, and use that. So do you want to tell me if you think that they're a bad Pango player? Good Pango player. Okay, good Pango yeah. player coming up here. Ten seconds um, remaining. I guess the other question I have for you is earlier today we saw the <laughs> FNG Astros Pango. Ah, yes. Do you believe that this would be a Dubu one, or is this going to be... Uh, a undying. I, I don't pick. think it's worth trying a Dubu Pango and any uh, anything else undying. Okay, that seems like a mistake. That's fair. I don't think I want to saber light undying. Although I, I okay, I'll be down to watch it. <laughs> but I feel like it's just unnecessary at this point. <laughs> oh, that's so Ten good. seconds I remaining. That. I don't know. There are a lot of strength heroes though. No, there there were when they five it, seconds and then remaining. It became a lower ratio, less than a hundred percent. <laughs> Team Astros. Wow, you're really good at math. <laughs> Thank you. I try really hard. In fact, right now, hey, it is 75% strength. Yes. I know this combo. Undying yeah. Spectre. Okay. This is a pretty good one, right? You, yeah. uh, you're just, you know, it helps secure the lane, give Spectre an easy time, maybe get a little bit of space in the lane at some point. Spectre goes to the jungle. Remaining. You know, Undying also the best hero versus Spectre. Five so now you don't have to worry about remaining. that. That's for sure. Dude, are they going to pick Terrible and lose? Do you know why Undying is the best hero versus Spectre? Why is that? Because when you put the Tombstone down, it makes a zombie, and that takes away the Desolate damage. Isn't that annoying? That is annoying. Yeah, you just get a little a little friend. Now, Spectre doesn't hit you as hard. So, Trent, I did just ask a question. Yeah, I wasn't listening. What was it? It was, are they going to pick Terrorblade and lose? <laughs> is that what you said? That's literally what I said. Oh. 
Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just, too busy thinking I, about terribly inspected. But you're a little, you look a little shocked over there. Like, hmm. Well, you got to go with your gut on that one. I, I, oh. Why do you think lose? Why did you think they'd pick it first off? Just because they, you know, TV's the thing. My thought process here was Undyne just picked the Spectre because they feel like Aster are never going to, like, try. They're not going to try and make a ton of moves around the map uh -huh. and, like, play it out. And so they're like, okay, so we're just going to pick the Spectre farm up, and that's the way that Aster want to play. We're going to pick the, like, ultimate late game. And then Aster is going to be like, okay, we're going to pick a play, a, a hero that can go potentially high ground if we get an opportunity to, but we can also farm up really late game. So I feel like Aster are just going to, like, farm around the map for a really long time with Monet and then maybe think about, like, going high ground. They test the waters a little bit, put a toe in, you know, see how, it, mm -hmm. how the water is. Uh, and then just back out and like try and farm some more, and then eventually Tomato is going to end the game. Uh, how good is the Spectre build? I feel like that's what determines the uh, the Spectre oh, games these days, good point. right? Yeah, that, that's where you want to look. Is uh, now mostly it feels like the Eggs Rush is taking over. I haven't checked the numbers on today specifically, but lately it's mostly been like maybe a Falcon Blade. Maybe two Falcon Blades, sometimes just Treads, but Eggs. We also have the Echo Saver and the Orchid build, Disassemble. Uh, make the the Orchid and the Agnum Scepter. That one's pretty cool, but it's lost a little bit of its steam since the Echo Saver. That wasn't too bright. Well, last game we had the top three taunt, you said. Big question. Undying. Oh yes. Oh, top three. Top, top one. Top one. Top That's one. That's the one. It's, uh, it's, it's good. It's a, it's a good taunt. Hey, it's so hard to beat. Hard to beat this situation if uh, Aster are not careful. It is very hard to beat fighting into Undying. But uh, the Taunt will head on off to the southwest, and Aster will head down to the southeast, pick up their bounty runs. What do you think of cardinal directions when talking about Oh, I, I love it. I, I always go with the northeast, southwest. That's because I'm a geography nerd, so you know I, I think it's a good way to, to divvy battle. up the map so people don't say left and right because it confuses people. Does it confuse people or does it confuse you? I no, no, like I like I like left and right for the most <laughs> okay. part. But left right. and right is very subjective to like where your camera is. Yeah, I feel that's a like. Good point. Whereas I don't know. Plus, you know, you can't do up and down as easily. Yeah, north it, north stuff's just better. That's a way to go. Down. They're talking about tiny. You just get confused. It's cost of here to come down the here. Another relevant discussion here as uh, they got a nice early D4. Oh yeah, that, that's the value Doesn't stuff right there. Helping out your mid, taunting yourself through it. Unfortunately, you're taunting and where you just d so they don't actually see the taunt. That's mm. that's low MMR taunter. You have to taunt first. Yeah, he's just taunting for you guys. That, that's just, uh, that's friendly taunt. Do it one more time, Dibu. One more time. No, he's, he's got a ward first. One more time. Come on now. Wow. He insulted the guy's taunting once and just done. There it is. Right. Nice. Thank you, Dubu. All right, now about it here. Yes, I think that would be great. As uh, Moon mm -hmm. just going to head on over. And yep. Go for the body block right at the start. Love to see that. And we're going to get some of the, the highest level uh, highest level abilities getting thrown out here in just a moment. Uh, mid lane, we have the uh, the Lena versus the Void Spirit here, and Brile. Uh, Brile is a pretty terrifying laner in his own right. Obviously, he sticks a bit of uh, some questions here. We're not really sure what's going on, but uh, I imagine Brile is going to do very well in this matchup. And frankly, I I'm a little bit concerned about a game that 86 is going to have. I envision this as a matchup where Brile is going to be like the highest net worth of 25 minutes. And the Void Spirit is going to be like 60% of what his Terror Blade is. And all of the gold gets funneled to the Terror Blade. And unless they win those big fights around Roche, like specifically the first and the second Roche fight in a row, then I think this game looks really hard for, Undi uh, for Aster. I mean, he just double waved him and is still underneath the tower, keeping that pressure on. 86 definitely uh, going to be struggling a little bit to deal with all that early pressure out of the gate. I think he got one of the range creeps tonight at the very least as well. There you go, that's the damage. Pretty good. You need something, right? True. <laughs> definitely, yeah. But Bryle, very talented lane uh, as well. He's in the early goings here. You can see uh, the wave pushed fairly far forward. Dying, gonna need to get a pull off here, and unfortunately, the camp is blocked out at the moment. Uh, I think 
think their small camp is still blocked out as well, yeah. Jeez, 86 needed that one pretty bad. Unfortunately, no ball or anything, so grabs it and uh, won't get much. Whereas you look over at Brile and he's just gonna be like filled back up and has the bottle. Yeah. Very pleased. Although 86 would just get his bottle delivered as well. Mm -hmm. Not as much healing as uh, he needs to fully top himself off, but still, he should still be okay. And I'm in here very deep near Moomiander. Just uh, just following in to see what, what are you guys doing? You guys pulling waves? Ah, that's cool. We, we can play down here. Is this new? This new? This safe lane for Dire Heroes? Easy peasy. Thought about going for a fissure there, but calls it off. Yeah, the, the wave pulls uh, are definitely strong. And you can get a stack off at the same time. Land him. Oh, <laughs> I like that. That's good. All right, that was sick. Again, blocking the wave so that way they can't interrupt the stack. Yep. Yeah, it's funny because back in the day when we discussed this concept of um, Earthshaker being very poor versus Clockwork and how good Clock does, Clock was a support, so you didn't, you didn't actually deal with Shaker in the lane. Like, maybe you would if the Shaker was a 5, but that's still a different interaction, whereas this is like actual support versus support. It's actually even worse. Yeah. Because you're moving from a, uh, a game state problem to a just entire match. Like, it's not just like mid. This is early, mid and late game. Uh, Lon's just going to be in your face. Just everything hurts. Mm. All of it. It's dangerous. Uh, right now, speaking of everything hurting, 86, he's actually not doing too bad here. You know, you look at this one, 20 and 6 versus the 12 and 0. Uh, but the, the more important part is that it feels like a lot of those denies were uh, on melee creeps instead of the range. So while he is about a half a level ahead, it's not as bad as we've seen in some of these other ones. Yeah, but he already has a 500 gold. That's true. And he's probably going to get that top rune, too. I don't, I don't see anything getting his way for that one. So Radiant's I foresee some problems here for 86. Oh, oh, oh Earthshaker's Courier's running mid. That might give this away. Oh, Fisher's Fisher. wrong side. Oh, LSA, a couple more punches. Oh, he's 86 dead. He's in dead. trouble and going to fall. Ryle. I tried to jinx him for you guys last right now. What more can I do, honestly? He did everything he could. Meanwhile, though. On the saber light here. Has to do a little ring around the rosies. Dubu dies on the other side, actually. So they are going to be able to get out with saber light. And in fact, the moon here put some more pressure on. They did lose one for it. Yeah, looks like he just got scatter blast and uh, hit by the tower to with 200 damage. So perhaps an unexpected uh, ranging issue there for our, uh, our undying. Or maybe he just wanted to feed. Yeah. Oh no, he, he TP bought him, so he didn't want to be. Okay. He does get to play Courier though, passes some items off to Tomato. -uh. Always a nice way to make it happen. Success. Going for that uh, ring of health just to sort of maintain oh, Top lane, we're diving a bit here. Yeah, Monet! Oh! oh gets nice. him brought down. No chance for him doing it. Didn't even have the mana for the cogs either to try and break that out. And let's say you get the cogs off, like then you're kind of just trapping Monet too. There wasn't a good angle. I think they had really nice positioning uh, from Saberlight and Commander to make sure that wouldn't happen. Tips to Monet too. All the way. All right. Feel pretty good about themselves. Are you talking to me? Kyle line. It is appropriate when you're being taunted too much. You know the voice lines come out. Yeah. Now, I was sent a message, and I don't know if this is true, but I, I was told that the uh, the Koloku he, that he spams on Saberlight is actually his own voice from the Hippomaniac's oh, lines. Of course. So there you go. He helped him out. That makes sense. Yeah. Jump in. 86. Maybe some trouble. Laguna Blade out. One more punch does the job. And Dubu getting a soul rip kill. Two points in Tombstone also, so they want to get active early. They're dying, they've had a long day. They got a DD on Ryle. They're ready to get this action moving. Oh, Fissure block afterwards. Oh, LSA connecting, has the cookie, but uh, no carbs for him right now. This is so interesting. This is a lot of pressure on Lanham now. Right? Like, he has to come and like play this really aggressive because they don't want to give a ton of damage on this tower. Yeah. Uh, it looks like, of course, they're not going to be able to punish that, but it just means, like, missed out time for Lanham. You know, he's trying to get somewhere. As, the, as clockwork, you want to be level 6, your TB's abandoned the lane, but instead of, like, being able to play up there and maybe mess around with Saber like get some XP, you're, you're busy just, like, waddling around mid trying to help hold the tower. 
I, I don't remember who it is that says this. I feel like this is a KBBQ save, but the sins of the mid lane have passed on to the other ones. Some analysts call it lane bleed, but I, I'm down with that. That's That sounds <laughs> way cooler. Chase trying to find that kill. Good play there. 86 able to connect. And afterwards, they find a return kill onto Borax. And down both of them. Everyone wants to get involved here in the mid lane, evidently. A bit. Lots of movement around. I have not looked at XSS in ages. He's currently 0 0 1 after they got the kill on the Undying. He's doing pretty well overall on, uh, on Net Worth. Obviously, top of his own team and, and not too far behind uh, Tomato, who's facing the lane there on the Spectre. But everyone is behind Bryle, who is, uh, as very much predicted, I think, in this game, looking to steal the show. I, I think the Lina here just looks both as a, a player versus player matchup, as well as just like where I see Lina fitting in this match. It looks so much better than our previous Lina game. So, do you want to tell me a little bit about what the goal of this here is going to be? Not die. Oh, only at level six. Maybe they can still get it, though. Bryle, oh, but the movement in! Moon able to salvage it just barely off the mark. 86 wants to finish it. The cookie, it's not going to be there in time, though. Yo, the Tumbler's toy delivery. Unbelievable. Tomato now turns on the Borax. They've gone in too deep and are going to get punished. I set on Lenham. Are they going to instead go for 86? As Tomato hits Desolate hit after Desolate. They will retreat away in the end. Go back in, maybe. Oh, the puts travel! Oh, oh Bryle came my. back in on him. All right, so that this is a good example Damn. of goals of Lena. Uh, you know, moving around the map and getting kills. So what's really nice in this game, I think, is that you have a lot of assistance from the Earthshaker and even the Spectre because Spectre helps you identify instantly in a team fight where the heroes you want to kill gives them a little bit of damage and you just pop and explode them. And not only can Spectre do that, but Earthshaker can do that too, right? I mean, he, he tends to kind of lurk around the back, maybe he gets an echo, hits three heroes, and you go, oh yeah, that one. That's, That's the, the one I want. And, or you can follow up LSA too. And the other thing that I see in this is that um, it's all on Lanham really to uh, to get the catching picks, I think, onto Bryle. And that's really tough. It's just a purely support clockwork. So that means he's going to need 86 there with him, but you're laning versus the Lena as the Void Spirit, so you're going to have a slower game. So you're just going to be ahead the whole time. That sort of slows down I mean, everything. It's all the stuff that they want is... Ooh, Tumblr's toy. Radiance bottom Dude, is so is good at Earthshaker. Doesn't seem fair. I would say it's in his top three, for sure. I think, when I think Moomiander, I think Batrider, Earthshaker, I, honestly, I, I might say Clockwork. As uh, Lemon goes down, but that, that's kind of been a while. Oh, but a good tombstone, the soul rep trying to keep it alive. Borax moves on in, will eventually get that kill. Does it come at a cost? Ooh, the echo. Not yeah, that was a, that was a curse. That, that's what that was. That's all that was. That's the only way you get an echo like that. Uh, that's, that's on us. Eastern comes out now. Bryle wants to chase Monet. Laguna Blade back and ready. And the right clicks come through. What? It's under, though. Okay, okay. Mr. Monet. Put a lift there. That was a chip fest HP regen right there. It's pretty much keeping you alive at that point, you know, to get off that Sunder. That's true. You had a little bit more mana there on Ryle. I think you probably get that kill with or a Light Strike Ray or Dragon Slave. Oh, he was only down to 60 HP, guys. It wasn't even close. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, wait. Wait, no way. He's checking out the console. To make I sure. the console. I think it went even lower. Right here. That's so fun. Real analyst. Oh, sorry. He was actually at 9 HP before he got the thunder off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, nice. Let's go. Oh, that's, that's some donut. Tomato. Got a juke. Got a jab. Got to get out of there. The cookie's too strong. But will it be enough? Oh, what? He got out! Oh, oh, oh no, he went back! He, he stayed! Get out of there. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, Juke Jive didn't stay alive. He got ravaged. Yeah. Stop trying to dance on me. That's you know? Dyer's middle tower Dang. is under attack. Oh, you even popped the ravage for that one. Okay. 17 HP for that. And now to the side. Jumps in, wants to find one. Bryle gets the punch. Lacuna Blade afterwards. Couple more hits, but the Resident Pulse. <laughs> Alive that void spirit now the turn on exit this no wow. rabbit. What a sacrifice though the hook shot in there to save. Yes 
after he was just barely saved on the clockwork from, I believe, a salve to cancel out the damage, one of the ticks of an urn to help try and keep him alive as well from the snap fire. So the teamwork is there from Aster. They're doing everything they can. It's just, unfortunately, not quite enough. It's all just like trying to plug the dam a little bit, but there's, there's cracks. It's leaking through here. One thing about dams is that when they start to leak, it's usually not going to look that good in a little bit. And they patch those holes. Pull it back together. Ah, that's a good start. Good way to do it. Get caught, Aster. That was so greedy. Just like walk up and try to deward yeah, it again. Yeah. It's a little bit wild. That was a uh, Nerf Shaker with like a four staff, not a Tumblr's toy. Yeah. Super. Breaks the smoke. Easy peasy. I, I think he saw this coming, yeah. It's like where like your ally dies, what's the natural move? They want to smoke. You know that they just want to run mid, right? It's, uh, it's a very obvious play at this point in the game. Everyone just wants to surround that mid tower and trying to apply some pressure there. They have a really nice deep ward here, though, uh, by the, the Radiant Ancients coming up from Team Aster. And so uh, the best thing about these deep wards is they're going to try and keep an eye on what's happening on the Ancients, which is good because, you know, that's where the Spectre is. It also spots a lot of courier flights. So you're going to know, like, who's playing in this area, who's, who's sitting up there. That's a great spot to spot smokes coming in, too. Happens all the time. They fly into the triangle and they try and smoke out. They're going to try and use that vision to chase down Tomato. Oh, oh the jukes. Got him. He knew. Fisher afterwards. Good the jump. Taunts in on Dubu. Saber light. Alive. Back. A lot of initiation out there, but a good play through. Morax backing out. A lot of zombies Lannis on these guys. Dead. He's mega dead. Echo afterwards. Nicely played. So they take down the Void Sphere and the Clockwork and still struggles continue. Look at the Void Sphere right now. 4,700 net worth. One, four, Six. and two, and just, I, I'm doing a lot in these fights, I will say. Like, I feel like he's playing fairly well and, and, and getting in there pretty deep, but just not, uh, not playing a whole lot. And I, I believe the point booster must have been on his courier, too. Right. So uh, also pretty painful to have lost that. On the other side ourselves. The Spectre, who is uh, one component away from finishing off the Aghanim Scepter. 800 gold for Tomato. XSS is huge, though. It's very large. That's fair. Only 1,000 gold behind Bra. It was a pretty much free game. It's 5-0 and 2, and XSS kind of quiet, but has Blink Ravage. So, good smoke opportunity. Um, hook shots back up, because this is, you know, 60 seconds now on the clocker, which is why it kind of works a lot better than 5. I feel like they could go for something. Can there need some vision right now? This would be a good timing. But likewise, you can see Undyne really putting an emphasis on trying to shut down all these areas of the map. Drop it to stone. Just farming. Okay. This is taking away uh, enemy farm, right? That's what this tombstone's doing. You're making TV poor by doing this and enriching yourself. That's a that's a two-way swing. Looks like Aster could try and go for a, uh, a move here if they want themselves though with Tombstone down in a bit. Maybe. I mean, if, if you wanted to go with a blink reveal with your Tide, yeah, that, that's a pretty good fight to take. But, um, gonna get caught the roll through, but the taunt comes out in time. Now the turn wants to blow him up and we'll get it. Tubu and Moon still trying to play around here. Feels very strange, jumps in, gonna get the connection from XXS and I'm dying. You know, maybe uh -huh. starting to show some yeah. signs of fatigue here. These were pretty free kills here right now. They still have Blink Dagger in one sec for XXS, so able to just cut off Dubu and Wow. Honestly, they're pretty lucky that Ryle didn't die in that engagement too, because the way he like played up the river, there was a blink tide. Good chance that he gets caught before the BKB and just gets stunned up and goes down. I mean, it was a weird combination, right? Tomato about to finish this Aghanim Scepter. You had just completed the BKB, as you're talking about. And so, like, you can understand the desire to get in there and start fighting, but it felt like it was just, like, 30 seconds too early. Oh, very curious. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, Falcon Blade and the Aghanims for the, the Spectre and then Rake to the Orchid, so... Try and get uh, another very frustrating tool uh, to play against in pretty much good versus everyone. You know, you already know that E6 is uh, on the struggle bus trying to find his way 
to a uh, an Aghanim. How's he gonna get a Yules or a BKB or a Lotus? You know, th those are uh, they don't grow on trees. No. They grow in the camps. Yeah. He doesn't have time for that because he's fighting and dying quite a bit. It's been a hard one. Dyer's bottom Smoke tower. going out there. Brow has the bots ready, but it's actually just gonna follow right in behind. Oh, Not nice playing that. Scary. Very scary. Save life just needs more disarms. Make this easier. Uh, I, I mean, I this, feel like I, I, this is XSS, right? I mean, this yeah. is him. Find the angle on him. Too many heroes around you. Don't mess up the hook shot. Do boo. They got him. Got him there. Breaking the blink dagger. And the fissure. Oh, the fissure block off, but he's on the other side of it now. Gets away. Roche. Dude, I don't know about this. So this feels really weird for Undyne. This is not good now. Do not go back in. I don't know. I, it, it, this feels like almost a different team. It feels like they, they're really struggling to figure out what they want to do on Undyne. A lot of chaos. Yeah, they send in the content image to check it out. They're like, yep, they are not rushing anymore. Jump in. Good good shot there. Tries to control. Is it enough for the kill? They take down one. Has buyback. Are they going to go again? Aw, using that ulti afterwards. Man, that single target damage, though. I... They, they got the full minus armor now, as you can see right there from Borax, just absolutely going right through the Pangolier. And now they can combo that up here with the Tide. Do you have Haunt? To this side to go. Moon ready, jumps in. There's that go. It connects the LSA afterwards. Is it Monet? enough? Monet, he's able to get it off in time. Big play indeed. But now Lana, I'm in trouble, too. They've lost their two supports. Tide? Oh, the oh, S. Oh, S. He's in trouble. He's trying to get out of there. They throw out the dagger. Hunt back over. Reality's away. Tomato chasing them down one by one. 86 throws out that taunt, able to catch with the pullback in. As he gets ran down off to the side. 86. His last has dagger. One more jump. But oh, no, no. He's got one. Oh, no, he's, he's not going to go. go. All right, all right. <laughs> no one else wants to go. So it, all it cost was a Dubu buyback, but a hell of initiation coming in from Undyne, and they're going to take the Roche. It really felt like whoever just put themselves fully in the pit was just going to lose. <laughs> they, uh, they got oh, the last wow. The flare? Dude. It... Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. That's the, that's the veteran move right there. <laughs> Did they have vision in there? Is oh. there like an image or something? No, oh, they just... They just He's just it. a god? Well, yeah. I guess we know that already. Well, I mean, that matters. Wow, he hit it for 72 damage and got the kill. Well, let's go land him. Well done. 15 to 11. More importantly, Aegis on Lina. Will they be able to make the move? I mean, Aster just running at him again. Kind of feels like that's their uh, Lotus Aperanda. Or what? 300 gold away now from the axe. I, I love just moon lurking near mid. He's like, I know what you guys want. All Dota players want one thing, mid tower. He's coming right back. Get the blink back up. No echo. Jumps. Catches. Tomato ulti out. Land him dead. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's filthy. This lineup is so good with Shadow Step. It, it's just so painful to watch. Oh my God, he's so close. Oh no, 86. Oh no, 86. Buy your item. Buy it. I don't know if you're. Yeah, he got it. He, he's going to get the item at the very least, but will he have a chance to get out of there and survive? It is just these two. Shadow Steppers? <laughs> Did it just come back? Like, seriously. It was 30 seconds. It must have. <laughs> oh, that's good. Alright, well, back mid. Dubu's also ulting, so. Shadow Step, Haunt actually back up again in a second. So Dubu down low. Lenham gonna get chased. They go for it. Haunt's available, thinking about popping. They have Echo There too. it is. They got him. Lenham is in trouble. Looking for the big jump in. They got him under control. Monet. They back away. Borax taking a ton of damage. Ends up falling. Monet just holds his BKB and just like casually walks high ground. Just a little bit too concerned about how Moon Manor is following him around. Good decision making. I can't believe there's only a 1k, like less than a 1k lead right now for us dying. It does not feel like that. I mean, I think part of the Radiant's reason is just because of how ineffective it's felt like they've been able to be with their heroes, you know? Like, they, they, their heroes don't do a lot right now. I mean, eventually, I guess now that 86 has the uh, Agadim Scepter done, it starts to become more of a threat, but 
just doesn't feel that scary. I'm not afraid of Aster's lineup. I said that the voice fear went up being 60% of the TV, but I was, uh, oh, well, actually, it's pretty close. I said 25 minutes. He'd be 60% of TV's network. That was my prediction at, like, minute one. It's, it's, looking, it's looking pretty accurate, I will say. But he might drop to about 50% by the time we hit that. He's, he's already getting close. Yeah. It's just an unfortunate reality of, like, you know, kind of not only, like, difficult lane Void Spirit, but also Tidehunter on your team, right? Because Tide absorbs a lot. Tide is not a, a poor offlane hero. Tide, Tide needs a lot of net worth to feel very strong, un unless you're Thompson. Uh, but, that, you know, that was mid-Tide, and it just worked. Yeah, that was one of those things. Happens. That was no way to get through uh, Kraken Shell. Uh, well, I guess speaking of which, we still don't have that answer. As you point out, Lena going for the eventual Silver Edge. Uh, that will be one great way to deal with it. Moon. Moon, does he see an opening here? Lana oh, jumps Lana. in. Sam's opening. Oh, this could be big, though. The Ravage comes out afterwards. They jump in. Fissure, Saber Light. Down low has five Lana. axes. They go for round two of this now. Bryo controlling. Right clicks in onto Lana. He's going to fall. Still has Echo available. Four axe TPs out able to escape. So they buy back on the Pango thinking it was gonna be a bigger fight, but Aster that, that was surprising. Uh, that. Again, like they're not they're not sort of playing this just sort of haphazardly. They're they're baiting out the buyback and then retreating. Yeah they never should have uh, taken the fight any further just because the Aegis I don't think like that that's yeah. gonna be a tough fight. I guess maybe without the threat of the, the Pango they chase and go for a, a double onto the Lena but I, I definitely think Aster are much happier seeing that buyback and be like oh good value you know on the other hand, Saberlight really already has his blink. That, that was obviously like a big thing he's working towards for a while. I think he's okay handing off more of the farm towards Moomiander too. I think I understand that. Put the game in Moon's hands. Has a force now too, so some more help we saw as last game uh, versus both the Tide Hunter and, and of course the the most important thing will be the call. I'm really excited to see how much they can deal with these fights. Like with Dubu? Scotty, BKB, this could be big for them. Yeah, just close up Dubu, the jump in Echo. Is this even gonna work? I'm not so sure. They get the full control and will take down 86. Can they find any more afterwards? No more Echo. You have the grouping together. They're starting to catch back up to Motto. Still with that DD, looking for the jump, looking for the chase down, gets the control, finds the kill. Monet has his BKB and turns to fight, but just has to run. This isn't gonna work for him. 86 is already bought back in, tries to run in this fight. The silence with the counter silence. And now the chase down the run, the die back. Oh no, not like this as they chase forward, looking for more. Good cogs push back. But as they oh, follow nice. it up, the LSA is there. A triple kill for Saberlight. And Aster getting mollywopped here. That was the uh, the break reveal too. That caught oh. the tide off guard. Nice chase down. Tabato finds himself another. And just like that, breaks this game wide open. And that's more like the number it felt like, you know? Yes. Felt like a much larger lead and uh, well, hitting a lot of spikes and uh, power points here right now. Showing the, uh, the slideshow of pain to Aster. They go high ground and take their vote. This is exactly what they were hoping for. He's uh, a machine. He, he hits hard. Ooh. Oh, oh, silence. That oh, dead. He he tried to go for a uh, a four staff into me ravage, I think, right? Oh, no. That must be what it was, and he didn't expect the orchid. Yeah, that one hurts. That, that, that had to be one. it. I think Tomato just made like a giant unexpected play. Dude, are you kidding me? Now, out of the end, Bryle down low, but not enough for the kill. Oh. Orchid Spectre. This, this item build is just kind of crazy in general. It, it is funny how it mostly started as an Echo Saber thing, and yeah. everyone's like, oh, you know, this is actually just good. This is so good. I think I just want an Orchid now, guys. <laughs> Man, why would I play Storm and have to zip when I can just appear on them? What a stupid hero. And also be a specter. Yeah. Missing indeed. 27 to 14. And oh, underneath the vision. There it is. Hello. Oh, he's not even finishing. He's just hiding off to the side there. Did he swap back in? That's okay. good. 
Don't worry, it's coming back up again in 15 minutes. Oh, well, I was concerned, but no longer. Uh, a lot of that, that shard, too, then you went on Shaker. So Dying, looking good in this game number two, trying to close this one out and put themselves in a really good position. Coming out of Group A again, this team took a game off of IG at this point, looking like they are well on their way to 2 0 Aster. Yeah, and they're staying on top, they're, they're gonna force them back. Come on, show me what you got here. I got an arcane rune, I'm Lena. I got a silver edge too. I don't think you could even chase me down if you tried. Uh, what is the turnaround item that could give them some semblance of hope? Satanic TB, maybe they flub a team fight. That could be something. They're gonna smoke up. They wanna go for the Ravage. Are you gonna try another cute four staff play? There's an off century combo. The smoke pops, oh, he goes in. Jumps in right from the start. Can they blow him up in time? Yes, take down one, no buyback like that on dying have to back out get just a little bit too cavalier with their moves rolls in though echo to both why'd you walk up that hill y'all they take him down and now the rollback xs has in some trouble tries to walk himself out but tomato eyes on the prize trying to hunt thinks about the jump backs out afterwards they take down 86 was not anticipating it so many shadow steps so much damage and in the end three are dead Will they be able to take anything else? It looks like it. That was trading Ravage for your highest net worth and damage hero and winning the fight. Oh, Handedly. Borax dies. Oh, it's so him. Let's go, Dubu. One last hit. Getting some more kills. Oh, man needs a disarm now as well. And what more are you left to Get do? Get low. In trouble, Monet ends up falling. No buyback for 80 seconds. Undying. Taking. A set of racks now at the 28 minute mark, and I don't know. I I'm mean, surprised. I'm surprised they haven't done it. They, they, they very easily could just GG out at this point on Team Master. Maybe if Lena's here, you know, this gets swept up so much faster. Right now, there's actually no real threat of the other lanes. It feels like too much of a commitment uh, without the Lena here. So, realistically, they, they can just hang out for a little bit, but it's getting very close here. And uh, Aster running out of chances. Again, though, I reiterate. The other series was basically just as over. Mind you, they weren't yeah. down to racks on SG, but it looked this bad. And they managed to pull back a team fight. That's true. Because of, uh, you know, rushing, essentially. Uh, like, like, let's say they fought exactly like right now. That's pretty much what happened, is that VG fought when Roche was up in 40 seconds. They lost. Then they lost Roche. And then they uh, almost lost the game. So what I'm hearing you say is that if I'm dying... Ferocious, they're better than BG. That's the math checks out. Okay. Good to know. All the viewers at home as well take notes. Jubu hears that. He, he is just sitting. He's planting himself. Oh, let's see. This clockwork flare fades. Five seconds until it's back up. God, they have nerfed that so much. Flare used to be like 15 seconds. It's crazy, isn't it? And now Vision's too broken because everyone's way better at Dota. Yeah. Makes all the difference in the world. Saber light. Uh, very far forward. Smoke's gonna break. He doesn't have a swashbuckle. Roll up though. Available if he needs it. Or swashbuckle in. Aeon disc procs. Suddenly fine. All right. Well, step one. Get your outpost near the Roche. That's good. All right. Do we have buybacks to use if there's a outpost fight? Smoke tide. That's an important one. Look at this ward placed down right here. This could be a game winning ward for Aster. Or it could not. Okay, now this fight goes. Looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. Moon opens with that Fisher jump in. Echo finds the two supports. Monet in no man's land does get that BKB off Dubu up on the high ground. And now chasing by one by one. They find 86 in the fight. The BKB is out from Bryle. And now another round of it. Exegus has the Ravage available, but they've already lost Monet. Uh, he got stuck. He got Everybody stuck waiting for it. Everybody dead with no buyback. GG is called. And with that, Undying take the win 2-0. You got another happy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough play right there at the end, right, for XSS. He's trying, trying to see what he can do with his Ravage. 
Uh, so when you're in that situation uh, of Tide or any Blink Initiator versus Spectre, there's pressure on you to go first. Oh, yeah. Right? Because if, if the Haunt comes out, obviously you don't get to play Dota. You, you don't get to uh, to jump in and get your big surprise. And uh, he went for the way it out play because there's also BKBs in play. Right. So he waits out the illusions, waits out the BKBs, and unfortunately the rest of his allies were dead by then. But uh, that was just the end of the game. That's not actually what led to the loss. Uh, the loss was, well, frankly, undying just playing better lanes. And I feel like both games, their lanes just went better, and they just played it out straight from there. And it, it didn't really feel like much competition coming from Aster in some in some ways here. It's true. and uh, it didn't, like, confront them, you know? I feel like we didn't really have much of a fight. No, no. It was just kind of a beatdown a little bit. Uh, Brial, very good in that one. 11, 1, yeah. and 12. That, that, that's a Brial game. That, that's yeah. what he likes. You know, he's like, I have a winning lane on a hero I'm comfortable with that is not really countered by much. And we picked him in the first phase. Hype. Really impressive showing there. Uh, more damage than anybody else in the game that's not named Tomato. Um, <laughs> I just had to throw that little qualifier Perfect. in there. Yep. Uh, but for now, at least, I think that that's going to do it for all of our action here on Stream C. Uh, be sure to come on back tomorrow. Again, we're going to have all the same action going on continuously uh, where we'll have you know the, the main multicast mm -hmm. stream going on, all the action uh, across all four of the other streams that are happening as well. But for now, from us... See y'all tomorrow.